Good morning. Welcome to our morning worship and prayer. And uh, we want to thank you for taking time today to be with God and to hear Him as we worship Him through the song, through the reading of His Word, through going deeper into it, and through our prayers. Now, before we sing, I'd like us to read what Hebrews 4.16 and New Living Translation says. It says here, So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There, will be receive, there we will be receiving His mercy, and we will find grace to help us when we need it the most. Now, why can we be confident in approaching God today? Well, um, the author said, because He is a gracious God. To be gracious means He is kind-hearted, He is gentle, He is loving, He is positively predisposed towards us. Let's that sink in first a bit. Hindi siya nakasimangot sa atin ngayon, ano, pag umaharap tayo sa Kanya. He is a Father who is smiling at you because He is excited and looking forward to be with you. And so with that in our minds, let us confidently and boldly worship Him today so we can find mercy and grace to help us in whatever need we have this day. Let us worship Him through this song. We glorify Your name For You are worthy You are worthy to be praised, Jesus Oh And I surrender And I will yield And I will bow down I will live, I will seek you in all my days, and I will follow all your ways, cause you of this nation oh 
Good morning once again. Our text for this morning is found in John 21, verses 1 onwards. Let me read what it says. Verse 1, After this, Jesus revealed Himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. And He revealed Himself in this way. Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of, Can of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of His disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We will go with you. So they went out and got into a boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just as day was breaking, Jesus stood on the shore, yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, do you have any fish? They answered him, No. Now imagine the feeling of the disciples then. They were out all night fishing. Nag overnighter sila, no? And we know that Peter grew up in that place um, and he was an expert fisherman. So are, are the sons of Zebedee, John, James and John, no? And so as expert fishermen in the area, it is quite frustrating to be unfruitful in a job you were supposed to be good at. Do you know what that feels? I'm sure you do. We know how that feels, right? When you have, for example, as students, you have studied all night for a test. And then when the test came, parang nag-blank ka na lang, and then you forgot everything that you studied. Or when you prepared well for a presentation, proud na proud ka pa naman dun sa presentation mo, yet when your boss saw it, grabe, hindi lang na-appreciate, di ba, nung boss mo, kinarun pa ng mga kasama mo. Or, maybe pinagtinuruan mo na yung mga anak mo how to do chores, tinuruan mo na sila paano mag, uh, uh, mag, magtupi ng, uh, ng kama, maglinis ng bahay. Nakilang ulit ka na pero hindi pa rin nila ginagawa. O kaya naman, di ba? You poured your heart into a relationship. All your heart into a relationship. Extended so many ways for a relationship. Tapos ang sinabi lang sa'yo, it's not you, it's me. Ang <laughs> sakit ng ganun, di ba? Well, in this life, we experience frustration. It's part of the reality that we face, right? Even as Christians, our expectations will not always be in sync with our realities. We all have moments wherein we will have emptiness. And in those times, empty nets rather. And in those times, 
when our best effort seems to produce nothing, it is those frustrating times that Jesus often stands on the shore of our hearts watching and waiting for us to recognize His presence. Now, I like that Jesus, at that moment, stepped in an ordinary work day or work situation for those disciples. Uh, they were fishermen, and it was a day, normal lang naman yun, ano? And Jesus stepped into that picture. I like it because it's a picture of the kind of involvement Jesus wants to have in our lives. He does not want to be involved in us only when we attend services on Sundays or Fridays or even in small groups. But He wants to be involved in us every single day, even in the ordinary days. Let's continue on the verse. Let's see what happened. In verse 6, it sa- he, says, he says there, He said to them, Cast the net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. Now, think about it, no? Right side of the boat. Hindi ko alam kung gaano kalaki yung mga boat nila. No? Hindi naman aircraft carrier mga gamit nila. Um, and so, malamang mga dalawang di pa lang o isang di pa lang yung width nung left side to the right side. And so, it doesn't make sense um, what kind of difference casting the net on the right side will do. But, there was something about that voice. If you would put yourself in a disciple, si parang hindi naman to yung first time na nangyari yun. Happened many, three years prior. And in that opportunity, that was the same thing. I can imagine Peter, wait, teka, all night fishing pero wala nangyari. And then there's this voice that says, cast your nets again. Most likely, Meron nag-churn sa puso niya at that time. And then the disciples who were with them, naisip din nila, wait, narinig ko na itong story yung ito ah. Narinig ko na yung sinabi na ni Peter to, Narinig ko na sinabi na ni Andrew to, Narinig ko na kwento na ni James sa ni John to, eh. So most likely as they heard the voice, cast your nets on the right side of the, vo- or, or, of the boat, something stirred up in them. See, I believe that God is still doing the same thing today. That in our moments of uncertainty and emptiness, in our moments that we find ourselves kind of unfruitful, I believe that in those moments, God still stands on the shores of our hearts. And He's still calling us with His voice. And He's giving instructions so that we can experience His faithfulness and His power. Now, it may come into a form of a gentle nudge in our hearts or a word from a friend or maybe a passage of Scripture na naalala mo, no? reminding us of the past demonstrations of God's faithfulness to give us something to hold on to. Let me tell you, that's God. And He is guiding us as our Good Shepherd. He is leading us in those moments beside quiet waters and green pastures, even if it sometimes doesn't make sense, even if it doesn't answer all our questions. Here is our part. Will we listen? Will we pay attention? Thankfully, the disciples did. So, continuing verse 6. So, they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because of the quantity of fish. Now, let me share with you what this is not telling us. The point here is not, it is always good to fish on the right side of the boat. That's not the point. Uh, hindi rin yung lesson dito, dapat di tayo kaliwete. Okay? Do sa pag-ibig, dapat walang nangangaliwa. Hindi rin lesson dito yung it's better for us to do things early in the morning rather than at night. No? But here's the lesson that we can learn from this. See, are we willing to listen to Jesus even in our areas of expertise? Are we willing to heed His guidance? even if, if it involves us stepping out of our comfort zones, even if sometimes yeah, that's not the usual way we do things. Are we willing to involve Him in our lives, not just on weekends, but even on the mundane things that happens in our lives? Are we willing to pause and listen to Him first? Thinking about the fruitful, the fruitless toil of the disciples, could it be that the reason why there is fruitlessness also 
in some areas of our lives is because we're doing things without Him? Could it be that the reason why there's frustration, that there's weariness, that sometimes there's languishing is because we are doing things our own way? Jesus, right now, I believe, is standing at the shores of your heart, inviting you to go to Him and find rest for your soul. He wants to give you wisdom for whatever it is that you're confronted with. He is saying to you right now, Come, you who are weary and heavy laden. I want you to take my yoke, which is easy and light. He wants to partner with you. And He wants to move in powerful ways in your situation. See, thankfully for the disciples, they obeyed. And we know that obedience is not always easy, right? Especially when it requires for us to step out of our comfort zone or go against our own understanding. But when we trust and obey God, when we cast our nets on where Jesus directs us, right? we open ourselves to the miraculous and we experience His faithfulness in ways that we can only dream of or imagine. It is in those moments that we experience what the Bible says, No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived for those who love Him. It is in those moments that the only thing that we can conclude after the miracle is like what John said to Peter. It is the Lord. Yung tipong sobrang mesmerized ka at the result. There's no other way, there's no other explanation that it is just the Lord. For the disciples, it was a beautiful moment of recognition. They recognized that this abundance of, fi of fish was more than just a coincidence. It was a sign that Jesus' presence is with them. That's the only reasonable conclusion for them. It is Jesus. So I want to invite you and ask you, do you want to experience that kind of extraordinary life? Na ikaw mismo, after those projects, those endeavors, those um, times with your family, you will be able to look back and say, wow, hindi ko explain It is just the Lord. Si Lord lang talaga yan. Are we ready for a kind of life when, when people look at it, di ba parang, Pag tinanong ka, ano nangyari, ano ginawa mo, their only conclusion would be, grabe, iba talaga si Lord. I believe God wants to partner with you. God wants to strengthen you. God wants to inspire you, give you hope, give you creativity today. And so would we at this moment pause and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this moment and we thank you for this time. God, Lord, thank you that you desire for us not to do things by ourselves. Lord, you delight in being with us every step of the way. God, Lord, thank you that, uh, Lord, even at work, even in our studies, Lord, in our families, there are so many God-sized missions that you have given us in those places that you don't want us to move things our own way, you want us to be empowered by you as well. And so, Lord, I pray, would you please empower your people today. Thank you for the grace that is available, the grace that is present, your faithful, present presence with us today. Help us right now, Lord, to Lord, um, acknowledge it and also to humble or humbly Lord, allow your presence to guide us today. For those of us who have certain decisions that we have today, let's just respond to that. Some of you, you have you know, things to do at work. I'd like for us to pause for a few seconds and allow the Holy Spirit to instruct you how to go about your work today. Let's do that. Lord, thank you for the ideas. Thank you even for the passages that you have shared, my brother or sister. Thank you for the grace that you are extending to them as they do their work today. For those of us who are students, 
We know we have a long way to go today or even this week. But will you take a moment right now to pause and allow the Holy Spirit, Lord, thank you that you want us to be guided by you. Teach us, Lord, what you want us to do. Thank you that you will point out certain key things that we need to accomplish this week. Lord, would you please do that work right now? Thank you, God. For some of us, Lord, who are Lord, taking care of our homes, so many things to do, so many things to teach. But Lord, even as your word says, you ordain the steps of the righteous. Lord, would you please let us know, ano ba yung mga next steps? For every parent here, every mom, every dad, Lord, would you please give the grace to know what's the next step? How do we train our kids? How do we lead them at this time? How do we comfort them? How do we instruct them? Lord, thank you. Would you please give us the next steps? God, thank you. Right now, Lord, you're doing just that, Lord. You're just revealing the next steps, giving instructions where to cast our nets in our family. God, thank you. Lord, we receive your guidance. We receive your grace. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Because you are my own. excited to hear about the miraculous things that God will do through you as you learn to cast your nets whichever side that Jesus instructs you. Thank you again for joining us today and as you go about your work, your studies, as you go about your day with your family, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May His face toward, turn toward you and grant you peace. God bless you.